talk about the relationship. My girlfriend ha has influence on me. She uh, she's a big feminist, and uh, you know that made me think about those kind of issues. I I'm a feminist as well. Any, any feminists here? Clap. Any people? Fem <laughs> now, here's the thing. Okay, now there's a lot of people that didn't clap, but <laughs> I I don't believe you. Bump bump bump. Another one bites the dust. What's up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And that's right. The latest person in Hollywood to be accused of sexual misconduct is Aziz Ansari. So today we're going to be talking about this and we're also going to talk about some solutions because like I always say, here at The Rewired Soul, we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. So one of the reasons that I'm making this video, there's a million reasons why I'm making this video. First one is for guys, be better, be better. But I've always been kind of weary of Mr. Aziz Ansari. So I was a huge fan of his work, still am. I like his show, Master of None. Heck, it wins some awards. So I'm not the only guy who likes it. But one of the reasons why he blew up was because he was playing this, this white knight, right? Um, in his stand-ups, he even made a book about uh, modern romance. And when he does these things, he talks down to guys for being scummy guys, which you should do. There are a bunch of terrible men out there. I've discussed them in other videos, which I'll link in the info card above. So I'm glad that he does that, but you always gotta be worried about the wolf in sheep's clothing. And that ha is how I've always felt about Aziz because he's always talking about these terrible guys and that's kind of how he blew up. And it's almost like YouTubers. It's almost like people on this platform. You see them make a video and they're like, okay, okay, that, that got me some traction. I need to keep running with that. I need to keep rolling with that. And then he ends up writing a whole book about it. But the book is also about like modern romance, dating, texting, dating sites, and all this other kind of stuff. But even in his show, Master of None, which he does a lot of the writing for, he tries to appear as this do-gooder man just being a really good guy, to be this exact example to other men. But this story actually came over the weekend and it was first released by uh, a website called Babe. So I will link to this article in the description down below, but it's, it's very long, but I highly recommend you read it. Like my friend sent me this article and I was like, what's this about? This sounds weird. And I read it and it is so detailed and just brutal. And to give you kind of the Cliff's notes on it, um, a young woman who wishes not to be identified, she met Aziz at a party. She was blown away. Oh my God, that's Aziz. They start talking, they exchange phone numbers, and then Aziz asks her out on a date. They go out on a date, everything's cool. They have like a glass of wine and he's like in a hurry to get out of there. Let's go back to my place. So they go back to his place and immediately, he's putting the pressure on her to start performing sexual acts. And I won't go into the, the you know, real deep details on this, but check out the article. Um, and the way it's described, you can just picture this in your head. And this is why, men, we gotta be more empathetic to this situation. Like, this woman gave him more than one hint that she was not into it. She just didn't want anything to do with it. And she even details part where she was trying to get away from him, um, trying to leave, and he kept kind of jumping in front of her and things like that. And it puts you in a really awkward position, right? And they didn't end up having sex, but he performed oral sex on her. She did the same to him reluctantly after she kept saying, let's slow things down and everything like that. And eventually she ended up saying, all you guys are the same, I'm out of here. And she left crying. And this dude texts her and like, she sends him a long text like, this was terrible. And he sends like a, a nonchalant text like, oh, my bad, I must've read the signals wrong or something like that, right? And as with any of these Hollywood stories, this is probably the first of many to come out. I have a feeling over the next week, we're gonna see a lot more. But aside from what Aziz actually did, his response to this thing is 
one of the one of the reasons why I'm so upset about this situation. So let's let's go ahead and read this together. In September of last year, I met a woman at a party. We exchanged numbers. We texted back and forth and eventually went on a date. We went out to dinner, and afterwards we ended up engaging in sexual activity, which by all indications was completely consensual. What indications? Like, here's, okay, so let's pause real quick. Here's the thing, he does not deny any, any of her story, any of it at all. So if he's not denying any of his story, then which indication did she give him, right? Okay, let's continue reading. The next day, I got a text from her saying that, although it may have seemed okay, upon further reflection, she felt uncomfortable. It was true that everything did seem okay to me. So when I heard that it was not the case for her, I was surprised and concerned. I took her words to heart and responded privately after taking the time to process what she said. Then he ends with this little gem. I continue to support the movement that is happening in our culture. It is necessary and long overdue. Like, okay, first off, dude, you gotta back up. Like, you ain't allowed to be part of this movement right now until some of this stuff clears out of the air, okay? But, like, here's the thing. And because I have a mental health channel, let's talk about mental health. So, like I said, I'm pretty frustrated because he built a career and an audience based on this character, this persona of him being good guy Aziz, right? He even had this stand-up clip, um, which I thought was funny because I have a lot of female friends who get the unsolicited junk pics, right? So, here's what he had to say about that. I have no message. Just a photo. Such a strange display of male arrogance. Just like, what am I gonna do? Speaks for herself. <laughs> so stupid! I make this video for all of you. There is no chance in hell that Aziz is gonna see this video. So I make this video for all of you. So the two things I wanna touch on mental health wise are two things called pride and ego. Pride and ego play such a huge role in people's mental health and when when I'm seeing all these situations, I, I just think about the inflated pride and ego of the men being involved in these. So pride. Pride is the way we think other people should treat us, right? Nobody should talk to me like this. People should treat me like this. Um, so in Aziz's case, you know, he has expectations of how people should treat him based on his stardom, right? Then the ego. The ego plays really closely into the pride right? The ego is the story that we create in our head about ourselves and that inflated ego, okay? So one of the issues in Hollywood is you have these men, and, and this is a whole society issue, by the way. This isn't just, you know, a small like, okay, these are people right here. Like, one of the reasons that these people are so terrible and run amok is because we put them, we put them on this pedestal. We put them just way up here because of this talent they have to act and entertain. You know what I mean? So they get this inflated ego and they think they can treat anybody how they want. Um, these guys think they can treat women however they want and then they get exposed just like this, all right? So I mentioned in one of my last videos about how addiction destroyed my esports career and I talked about how a lot of that was manifested through pride and ego, right? Pride and ego destroys so many of us. And on a more personal level, so you can relate to this, because I'm trying to help you out, we gotta start looking at how our pride and our ego plays into um, the jobs we have. We get a lot of inflated pride and ego there. The relationships that we're in, right? We think that we deserve more in a relationship. We think um, we, 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 we should get this kind of attention and this love and this Person, this person should be grateful for who we are and the fact that we're with them. We get such an inflation of these things and we start treating people like they're less than us. And to be honest, that's one of the drawbacks of living in a capitalist society. Like so many things are based on wealth that we look at people like, okay, wealth must mean that they're a certain type of person. And what we're finding out lately with all this Me Too stuff is that that's that's not always the case, all right? But 
I, you know, the last thing I wanted to end with is something that Gary Vaynerchuk talks about all the time, which is this. That's Buddhist belief, treat others as you would like to treat your mother. I believe in that stuff. I actually think it's not some karma cosmic thing. I think it's actually quite practical. Would it not make sense to our practical brains that if you're doing something good for somebody else, that that puts you in a leverage position for something good to happen to you. I'm actually not very romantic or cosmic or spacey or zenified around providing people value. Like I love karma, I believe in it because I believe karma's fucking practical. That's right, karma is practical. It's practical. Like we all have these ideas of who we wanna be, where we wanna go, what our goals are, what our version of success is, all these different things, but that's more of a reason why you need to start acting like a good person right now. Not once you get to fame, not once you get to fortune or whatever your, your goal is, don't start trying to be better then. Start trying to be better right now, okay? Being good to your fellow human beings, it just makes sense. Part of the problem, and I've talked about this in other videos, is the default mode network in the back of the brain. I'll link to a video I did about YouTubers trying to teach them a little bit about this, but it comes from our posterior cingulate cortex. This is where all of our selfishness comes in, okay? So we need to start learning how to deactivate that thing and be more empathetic. Try to understand, like, you can look at Aziz's whole response and like, is this dude really that disconnected to other people that he couldn't, he couldn't see the signs that she was not into this, right? But anyways, I would love to know your thoughts on this whole Aziz situation, so be sure to leave your comments down below. And if you like this video, please give this thing a thumbs up. It helps out the channel. And if you're new here, I'm always making videos about mental health to help you out, so make sure you click the little round subscribe button, all right? If you wanna check out some other videos, click or tap on one of those thumbnails. But thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.